Horses are among the most beloved animals on Earth today, popular throughout the world regardless of culture or background. But despite this popularity, their recent history is steeped in tragedy. First evolving in North America around 55 million years ago from an ancestor the size of a small dog, horses have since grown in size and number, migrating throughout the world. There were many different types of horses that branched off during the Cenozoic. This isn't necessarily a video on horse evolution, so today we'll only focus on one group of horses that's relevant to us, the genus Equus, which evolved during the Pliocene. By the time of the last ice age, horses could be found on almost every continent, from the plains of the Americas to the ends of Asia. Unfortunately, after the end of the Pleistocene, many species of Equus went extinct. It would seem that the many horses that were staples of their respective environments were beginning to fade away. Of course, I am using the word horse pretty informally here. It should be noted that Equus does include many of the asses and zebras that live today in Africa and Asia. Zebras and donkeys are more closely related to each other than they are to our modern horses, which we'll be investigating for this video. Today's horses are known as Equus ferris. This includes the domesticated horse, Equus ferris cabalis, as well as the Przewalski's wild horse, Equus ferris Przewalski, an endangered horse species found in Central Asia. It's the only wild horse that's alive today. But what makes a horse, or any animal for that matter, truly wild? What about American Mustangs that live free of any domestication? The typical rule of thumb is that any animal which is not domesticated and whose line of ancestors are also not domesticated can be considered wild. So say the plain zebra, which has never been domesticated, can safely be considered wild, but a dromedary camel you might find roaming around in a desert with no humans around cannot be considered as such. This is because the last wild dromedary camels went extinct 2000 years ago, meaning that this camel could trace its lineage back to a domesticated camel ancestor. Of course, that also means that quote unquote wild horses in the Americas are also not actually wild. Typically the term feral is better used for animals like pigs and horses that decided to dip from their domesticated lives. All that being said, there was once a wild horse that only went extinct fairly recently. This animal is known as the tarpan, evolving shortly after Equus as a genus that first appeared during the early Pleistocene. The tarpan is a subspecies of Equus ferris, often being referred to as Equus ferris ferris. It's believed by many scientists that tarpans were the ancestors of almost all modern day horses. As such, the tarpan looked highly similar to the horses we see today. Much of their appearance of these animals can be assumed based on the last few individuals living in captivity. They stood around 57 inches or 4 and 3 fourths feet tall and possessed a pale underbelly. The exact color of the wild tarpans is still debated, with it being described as anywhere from a bay color to a more grayish color. While the horse had small ears and a shorter tail than domesticated horses, it had a thick head and a powerful body. The tarpan was known to have spanned a massive range, living from the Iberian Peninsula all the way to Alaska. They would primarily be found in two different habitats, those being forests as well as steppes. This has led some scientists in the past to believe that there could be significant differences in anatomy and behavior between horses of these two habitats which could even allow for the separation of the two as different types or subspecies. Despite this, there is no real evidence showing that there is much difference between the horses at all. Behavior of wild horses throughout Eurasia has been recorded multiple times in the past, but the problem is that many times observers were unable to detail whether these horses were tarpans or just feral horses. The ones that do seem to be tarpans, however, all seem to show the same signs of behavior. They tend to be more reclusive and easily frightened, oftentimes choosing to run away when humans are around. Those that are approached tend to show more aggressive behavior compared to feral horses, with many people reporting them as being untamable. The decline of the tarpans is directly aligned with the rise of humans in Europe and Asia. The tarpan has always had a presence in the history of humanity, with depictions of it being found in cave paintings such as in Lesseau, France. Just like deer and antelope that it coexisted with, the tarpan would have been hunted for meat, However, the development and increase in agriculture among humans led to a greater threat to the horses in the form of deforestation, destroying the habitats of tarpans that lived in forest environments. The remaining steppe tarpans were also facing increasing pressures. While the tarpan was known to have been hunted for meat even before human civilization had sprouted up, they were later viewed as pests by farmers, and were oftentimes killed because of that. Domestication also proved to be an issue for tarpans, of course, many tarpans were tamed early on and led to our modern breeds of domestic horses. In addition, wild tarpans were also known to breed with domestic horses, leading to hybridization. 
Many farmers saw these hybrids as undesirable compared to their existing domestic breeds. The tarpan population began to plummet in the wild, and the last remaining tarpan in the wild died in 1879, with it later going fully extinct when the last captive tarpan died in 1909. Since their extinction, there have been many attempts to try and bring the tarpans back. While an exact tarpan has never been bred back, there are many breeds of horse that share striking similarities to the extinct one. Some of these breeds include the Heck Horse, the Koenig Horse, as well as the Hegart Horse. But while many of these horses resemble the tarpans of old on a physical level, genetic studies still show that these horses are identical to our domestic horses. To them, they are nothing but a facsimile of the real deal. The tarpan is just another instance of a series of animals that we as humans were responsible for wiping off the face of the earth and then choosing to try and bring back. But to quote Alison Guy in her article on nextnature.net on tarpan revival efforts, the poor tarpan is a case study of our schizophrenic attitudes towards nature. But it's the recency of the tarpan's extinction that burns the hardest. If the horse had survived just over a little 100 years, a fraction of a fraction of its time on earth, we'd have been able to see it with our own eyes. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. If you like it, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell and do all that good stuff. Now you might be wondering for this part of the video why I'm doing it in live action instead of what I usually do. Now that's for two reasons. Number one, my mom's cooking, so I don't want my audio equipment to be picking up any weird stuff, so I'm just doing this through my phone. And number two, we have hit 50,000 subscribers. Now two years ago, I believe it was two years ago, let me go ahead and check. Yeah. Two years ago, we put our first video out. And you know, when we made this thing, it had like 14 views, maybe like at most 40. I left the channel for a while and all of a sudden it just went straight up. And now look at it. I'm very, very humbled actually to have gotten this much traction. You know, I see my videos sometimes pop up on Reddit too. And it's good to see that I'm making a difference in the paleo community. Now, since then, we've uploaded so much content to my channel. And I'm just very grateful for all of the support you guys have given me. Now, as usual, I, I'm sorry I'm pointing into the elephant. I don't really want to dox my face, but uh, so I'm just giving you something to look at here. But as usual, guys, if you have any suggestions, always put that in the comments. Now, I've heard some people say they love the mammal content. Some people, they want something different. So I've actually been thinking about that myself in the future. If I want to branch out, do some different stuff. You'll notice this video itself is something different than the standard evolution of X mammal I've been doing all the time, but I've got a couple more ideas on that subject as well. Yeah, I forgot about this, but oh, where is that? My elephant evolution video, that's hit 1.1 million views. Like, goodness gracious, I, I never thought I would have a video that passes a million views. And I know in this day and age, 1 million views isn't as big as it used to be, but still, on my channel, I think this is a huge accomplishment but I could not have done without you guys liking these videos, watching these videos, and overall enjoying my content. So when I see reactions and support like this, it lets me know that what I'm doing is right, and making this channel was a cool idea, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm very, very happy. So uh, basically, thanks for everything you guys have done, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.